So this is a project to retrofit uh, an existing five spool valve on a tilt tray or a highway vehicle recovery unit. Uh, it had manually actuated levers, five functions, winch in and out, the slide in and out, tilting the tray up and down. And there's two additional functions for the, um, the rear T-bar over there. I don't know if you can see that. So one is to lift the T-bar up and down so they can actually hitch and up to another vehicle and also to move it out and move it back in. So what we've done is we've taken some of the original parts. So we've removed the rear caps and the spring return system out of the first three functions, which was winch tray, in, out, tray, tilt, up, and down. So that was what we removed. And then we replaced it with pneumatic actuators. So pneumatic actuators means that you use the, um, the compressed air that the truck generates to actuate the brakes or to actually release the springs on the air brakes. So if you come under here, you'll actually see where we've actually replaced the original caps with pneumatic actuators. So three pneumatic actuators. So these can be purchased and retrofitted after the fact. They can be fitted brand new, but this is an old valve as you can tell by all the dirt and road grime that's on it. So these little air actuators are energized by three double acting air solenoid valves. Um, most of the Japanese trucks work on 24 volt. So these are 24 volt coils uh, with a compressed air supply. Now, to ensure that we get very good clean compressed air, we also fit a uh, compressed air filter, regulator, lubricator. So it's even adding a little bit of oil to the um, to the compressed air to keep it, keep everything nicely lubricated. Uh, the wiring system fairly straightforward. Um, a common negative with one positive that actually gets sent from the receiver here. So we've got the transmitter here. Even though it's eight functions, we're only using the first six functions, seven and eight are spare for possibly adding another function if need be at some future point in time. Um, this transmitter will work up to 150 meters away and you can actually get it to work up to 300 meters away with the addition of an aerial. We put the um, receiver in a um, water resistant box and we've tried to keep it away from the, um, the road spray as much as possible. Um, the box has a seal, so it should keep everything in here fairly clean and dry. So we'll start the truck up and I'll just show you just how everything works. Uh, the install can be done by yourself, it's quite easy. Uh, even though a little time consuming, there is some wiring and there is some um, compressed air to install, but it's not complicated by any means. It's fairly basic and it's all low voltage, so nothing to really worry about. I'll take you over to where we've actually installed the um, filter regulator lubricator for the compressed air so that the air supply is always dry and clean because these air solenoids are quite sensitive to moisture and dirt. So on this air receiver tank here we've installed an air pressure filter rip, uh, regulator lubricator so it will do a final clean and get rid of any particles of rust or dust because uh, they do, they do, these tanks do 
accumulate a little bit of moisture. I mean, this is what this is for, to actually drain moisture and any oil residue from the pump. But because they're a steel tank, they do rust, so this filter will get rid of any metal particles. And as it goes through, the, it'll go through a lubricator and you can adjust how much oil you actually add to the compressed air so that the spools down here, when these are actuated, the spools in here will actually get well lubricated. We've got little silences under here, little sifted bronze silences so that everything operates nicely and quietly. We've set the pressure on the regulator to about 100 psi. And you can zoom in there and look at that. We're about 7 bar. And you can see as you operate it, you can see the pressure drop slightly. Not only can you operate this remotely, but you can still operate it manually. As well as remotely, so you have dual functionality. The beauty about this is you can actually be in the car while you're winching the car on, rather than trying to manually operate the winch from here and then correcting the car's steering wheel getting it on the trailer, on the, onto the tray properly. So with the remote control, you can actually be in the car actually as you winch the car on. Uh, the other advantage of the remote control systems are that in high traffic or dangerous highway situations, you know, you're, you're dragging a damaged car or a broken down car, broken down car onto the tray, you can actually be right off the road, away from any drivers that aren't quite paying attention as to what's going on in front of them and you can be right out of the way as you actually are winching the car on and the only time you need to be near the vehicle is when you actually finally strap it down and get in and drive away. So the risks are reduced. You're also increasing your efficiencies and your speed, dramatically increasing the efficiencies and your speed with the remote control. This is a Galtec valve that a lot of popular valves can be retrofitted with pneumatic actuators. For example, Wav Oil, another Italian brand quite famous. Oil Path, possibly if you're in America, Prince also has um, air actuators that you could probably retrofit. Uh, so yeah, look into it. Well worth the investment for the uh, efficiencies and safety aspects that you will gain. as well. Not that you need to operate from 50 to 60 meters away, but it's possible. So that's it. Go to our website, Hydraulic Online, if you want more information. They're also available on eBay and coming soon to Amazon. Subscribe, like, give us a thumbs up as well. Why not? Catch us on the next one. Bye for now.